Welcome to Power Electronics Education Electronic Book Lecture 1 Introduction This lecture is presented by Dr. Firuzare In this case, suppose that the DC source is either battery or photovoltaic and basically this voltage is not high in some applications we need higher than uh, battery or photovoltaic voltage so through this DC DC converter we can increase the voltage up to level suitable for different applications so here we get adjustable uh, DC voltage and if we need to use that one as a power supply so directly we can actually use that one and here we can send it to this system so we can use it as a power supply because this voltage is adjustable, regulated, then we can send it through this system to actually use it for DC drive system or if we need to change the voltage from DC to AC so in this case we need AC voltage for different applications probably variable frequency, variable magnitude so through this converter we can control the output voltage and frequency suitable for AC drives or power systems in different applications for reactive power control or for active power control so we can say that if the input is DC unregulated so through this converter which is DC-DC we get DC voltage normally we have a capacitor large enough to provide regulated voltage and then if we need to have that voltage as a power supply we can actually use it in these applications or if we need for AC power system in this case we can connect the system through another converter which is called as a DC AC and then across the output we get AC voltage at different frequency and different magnitude now let's concentrate on different applications and see how we can provide for example DC supply how we can provide adjustable constant DC voltage to have a power supply suitable for different applications like battery charger for portable devices or high or medium power supply or charger for electric vehicles personal computers and other commercial systems so the point is that the output should be DC either adjustable or regulated so depends on the input side input source if the input is AC so definitely we need to have an AC DC converter for high power converter this one for high power converter this converter should be based on thyristor that means regulated and this is the power flow directly from AC DC that means we have only single converter or if we have to provide a DC voltage for low power applications so normally here we have diode rectifier so what we get here we get DC voltage and through this line we can control the DC voltage and at this point we can get regulated voltage and that regulated voltage can be used for power supply or if the input source is DC so we can actually control the output voltage through this converter and then finally we can use that voltage for power supply now let's concentrate on different applications for example DC or AC variable speed drives in robotics or industry 
so it can be low or medium power drives in home appliances like air conditioners, pumps or high power drives in tractions, electric vehicles, conveyors, lifts and so on. For DC motor drive, if we have a DC source, if it's high power, then again we need to have a thyristor and by changing the firing angle, this topology is enough to actually provide voltage to control this speed so in DC drive we can only use this converter if we have low power DC drive system and we need high accuracy with better quality if the input source is AC first of all through this converter which is basically based on diode rectifier we get DC voltage and this DC voltage is not regulated through this converter we get adjustable voltage and that voltage is enough for DC drive system and if we have DC voltage source and again we should actually provide enough voltage for DC drive system then we can change the voltage level we can regulate the voltage at this point and then send it directly to the DC drive system so this is the power flow for these applications and now we can concentrate on the AC drive system so for AC drive system we can basically look at the input side if the input is AC then through this diode rectifier here what we get we get DC voltage and here we have a DC voltage through this DC AC converter we can control the frequency and magnitude suitable for AC drive system so this is basically the power flow for this application or if the voltage source is DC and still we have to provide variable frequency and variable magnitude for AC drive system so what we can get we can control the voltage at this point through this DC DC converter and then through the second converter we can provide variable frequency and variable voltage for AC drive system so in last application power system applications especially for renewable energy system distributed generations flexible AC transmission power quality uninterruptible power supply and active and reactive power control we can provide AC voltage suitable for these applications again we can concentrate on the input source if it's AC then basically through this AC DC converter we can get DC voltage here and through this AC DC converter we can change the output frequency and magnitude for different applications if the point is that we have DC voltage for example from photovoltaic in the distributed generations or for rural area or for uninterruptible power supply then we can change the DC voltage especially voltage level through this converter so here we can boost the voltage and then at this point we have enough voltage across this output and then we can change the frequency and voltage through this converter for this application power system application that means variable frequency variable voltage now let's look at different applications in details for example comparing the traditional power supply which is basically based on low frequency transformer and compare with switch mode power supply so what's happened we have a line voltage grid voltage at 50 or 60 Hertz and especially at 240 or 220 and then using this transformer if it's a step down we can decrease the voltage 
for example from 240 to 24 or less depends on the application and using this door directive wire we can and through this based on this capacitor we can get unregulated voltage and that voltage is approximately around that voltage level and suppose that we need to have 15 volts so what's happened using this transistor which operates in linear mode then we can get regulated voltage across the output when we compare the output voltage with the reference and then the controller can change the base current in order to control the output voltage so that means this transistor actually acts as a variable resistor in order to provide enough voltage but the point is that there is a significant loss due to uh, operating in linear mode and normally this type of converter is not suitable for high power but now let's look at this type of converter in this case we don't have any transformer here we have filter we don't have any low frequency transformer that means here we get high voltage unregulated similar to this section but that voltage is high the peak value is around line voltage and then here what we get using switch mode device by turn on and turn off and using through this filter low pass filter we can regulate the output voltage that means the output voltage is controlled through this controller the controller basically measure that one compared with reference and then try to change the pulse width by changing the pulse width the switching time is changed and then we can control the output voltage and this filter can get rid of the harmonics so basically at this point the peak of that one is approximately um, 300 volts while here is approximately 30 volts the difference is that this one operates at low frequency so that means it requires large inductor and capacitor but this one operates at high switching frequency better quality better efficiency suitable for high power applications this is another example for switch mode power supply with multi outputs the advantage is that we can get multi outputs through this transformer and the point is that the size of this transformer is smaller than conventional system because in this case this transformer operate at high switching frequency at high switching frequency this transformer doesn't operate at line frequency and the point is that we can provide the galvanic isolation plus multi output and also better efficiency this is another example to control the flow of water for example in a pump we need to actually change the valve position in which the actually electric machine actually operate at constant speed so in this case we have losses across this valve but another way is that we can use adjustable motor drive that means by providing variable frequency and variable voltage we can control the speed at this point we don't need to have any valve here and the speed is changed based on this controller by providing variable frequency and variable voltage and then we can easily control the flow of water let's look at the circuit diagram of a motor drive system basically this part is diode rectifier which consists of AC to DC converter in a three phase system so what we get here we get unregulated DC voltage the voltage across the capacitor is similar to this voltage waveform and then by 
turn on and turn off these switches either in this phase or in these phases we can provide AC voltage by changing the pulse pattern by changing the pulse width in different phases by changing the switching frequency by changing the modulation index we can basically control the output voltage so that's why what we get here after the filter or with or without the filter we can provide AC voltage at different frequency or and different magnitude suitable for AC machine to control the speed and if I have output filter definitely the voltage across the output much better less ripple and what's happened here the controller can measure the output current and other variables compared with the reference so measure that one compare with reference reference can be voltage current or any other parameters and then the controller can provide proper signal at low voltage and if this voltage is not suitable to turn on the switches then this is a gate drive which can provide enough voltage or enough power to be able to turn on the power switch in high power AC DC converters the input voltage is supplied from a power grid through a diode rectifier that means this is the diode rectifier and we have capacitor across the output to regulate the output voltage so basically this type of converter at high power injects significant harmonic into the system that means this is the input current which is not a sine wave and this current has significant harmonics so we have to comply the IEC standard so in this case we have two options either using passive or active filter so passive filter is very bulky and expensive and also increase the size of the system the other option is using power factor correction so basically using high frequency converter which operates in the DC DC converter mode and using this system we measure the line current and try to shape it to a sine wave in phase with the voltage so in this case we can improve the power factor and also we can control the harmonics in power system sometimes we have to control reactive power in order to stabilize power system so we can use thyristors in such a case to control the current so basically if we have input voltage which is AC if we turn on the thyristors at different times that means we can control the reactive power and also when we have capacitors here with two thyristors connected to each other based on this configuration we can also turn on and turn off so in this case we can control the RMS but the point is that we can control the reactive power in power system sometimes we need shunt or series compensators for example in this case if we have a nonlinear load connected to this power system and if the current through the load is sine wave plus harmonics so the point is that without this shunt compensator the power system should deliver this current but in order to improve the power quality we can connect a shunt compensator close to this load and this compensator can deliver this harmonics into the load and the power system can deliver a pure sine wave that means this current plus current from the compensator equals to load current and in this case this compensator operates like an active power filter and in some applications because this voltage may fluctuate 
so we may have different voltage levels so in order to stabilize that voltage we can compensate that voltage using series compensator that means this voltage equals to line voltage plus that voltage so by measuring the output voltage and input voltage this converter which is DCAC provides different voltage and then here using this series compensator we can get regulated voltage in renewable systems for example when we have a PV system so because of variable voltage and also because we get DC voltage we need to export the power into the power system that means we have to generate AC voltage with constant frequency and also voltage so we need to have DC AC converter and in some applications if this DC voltage is not high enough we may have another converter cascade with this one that means using DC DC converter first we can boost the voltage and also we can regulate the voltage and then we can connect that one to the DC AC converter so then we can export the power into the grid now let's look at wind turbines which generate variable voltage in magnitude and frequency so because of variable speed here what we get we basically get variable voltage and variable frequency so this voltage and this frequency is not suitable for grid so what we need we need to change the frequency and voltage into a constant voltage and frequency because of the grid or in some application we may con control the voltage and keep the frequency constant in order to be able to transfer the power so in this case what's happened we have AC here and we should be able to generate AC here as well so basically in some applications we should be able to control the active and reactive power in both directions so one of the solution is that we can basically control the system using AC DC converter so what we get we get DC voltage so it doesn't matter the input voltage is the input frequency and magnitude is valuable what we get we get DC voltage depends on the output depends on the output of this generator and then we can have capacitor here to regulate the voltage and then we can basically have another converter which is DC to AC and then by controlling the frequency and voltage we can export the power and in some case we can call it back to back that means we can either the system can operate in four quadrants that means power flow can be bi-directional so let's classify power electronics in, into different categories but the point is that fundamental of power electronics means that an engineer should have enough knowledge of circuit theory electronics power components digital system like microcontroller to have enough knowledge of electromagnetic interference and compatibility and also familiar with simulation tools and knowledge of hardware and then for advanced applications for example working on power supply switch mode power supply and UPS an engineer should have enough knowledge of control and advanced control or working on motor drive an engineer should have enough knowledge of electric machine and control renewable energy and distributed generations an engineer should have enough knowledge of power system and control 
and to work on advanced pulse width modulation techniques an engineer should have enough knowledge of signal processing.